Greetings hobbyists, this is Arsan Zavall, and in this tutorial we're going to have a look at how to manipulate the orientation of objects and the cursor to make your workflow easier and faster. So in the scene on the screen I've been working on a robotic foot that's got two digits to it, and we can see a lot of things like pistons that have got some potential problems when working on them based on the orientation of these objects. Now let's get straight into this and start having a look at one of these pistons and we'll have a look at what hopefully should be a fairly standard way of manipulating orientation and then we'll have a look at some more complex versions. So I'm going to focus on this piston here and the reason I'm focusing on this piston is it has been moved quite a lot out of the standard orientation of the world. It has been rotated both on the Z axis so that's rotated round this way and it's been rotated so that it is facing downwards to put it into position. Now, obviously, I do have a copy of this here, which is less manipulated, but we're going to focus on this one because you might not have that to go to, and we want to be able to work on this if we come into this sort of situation in the future. Now, the, probably the most important thing to understand here is that Blender has a number of orientations that you can start to work on. And to demonstrate that, I'm going to bring up the gizmo, which I generally try not to for objects, but I'm going to put that here so we can see it. And you can see this gizmo, which comes in the world orientation as default, matches the gizmo in my top right hand corner. But this is very, very different to the orientation of the object. The orientation of the object is also being constantly looked at by Blender. And if I just come back to here, you can see that if instead of having it to default, we change it to local. So this, the local, is the orientation of the object itself. Now, before we go any further, I should mention or explain what this works off of. So if I press N and bring out the item panel, which is the one at the top, we can see that at the moment this object has a rotation to it. And that's shown here on the rotation section. And that is telling Blender what the local rotation or the local axis or orientation of this object is. Now at the moment I haven't applied my scale here. And if I press Ctrl and A, we can see a number of options here. Where we've got location, rotation, scale, and this one, which is the dangerous one rotation and scale or all transformations. If I just press scale, you'll notice that doesn't change the orientation. The local orientation has stayed the same. But if I was to apply the rotation, then that local orientation goes back to the standard world orientation. You can see the rotation has changed here to be zero. We can control and Z to undo that. So generally when we're working with objects, we do want to apply the scale, but we don't want to apply the rotation. And this is why. So let's start having a look at this object. So say I want to manipulate this in some way. Perhaps I decide that I want to make this ridge of the pistons wider. If I go into face mode and select those two faces, if I want to move this around and I press G, we should hopefully know that we can lock this to one orientation. For example, I could press X. The problem is that is going to lock it to the world orientation. Again, I could press X or Z and that is not going to look very good. This is not going in the direction that I want it to go. However, if when I press G, I have a look at my local orientation or I just remember it. But in this instance, I want to move this along the local Z axis, which is the one in blue. You can always check the gizmo at the top to know which axis is which. So blue is Z. If I press G and Z, it's going to work on the world axis. But if I press Z again, so I press Z twice, it now goes to working on the local axis. I don't have to do anything fancy to make this work. It automatically works. So I could, for example, move that to there. And I've now got this much thicker piston rim. Now, if I undo that, this works in other ways as well. For example, I can just use it for scaling. So on this room to be more extreme, I could press Alt and select all those faces there. And I want to scale this. But again, if I scale it, it's going to scale it on all axis. I don't want to do that. But if I want to manipulate this more effectively, I can press S, hold down Shift, press Z twice. And you'll notice that you can see the orientation change of the axes, the one that currently is showing in green and red, because at the moment, that's all I'm manipulating it on. The blue one isn't there for Z. And now I can make this wider. Obviously, this would look ridiculous, but let's just do it. And it hasn't scaled it on the Z axis. So this local axis makes things really easy to manipulate with. And essentially, whatever direction we want, we just double click that direction. Instead of just pressing X, we'd press X twice. And for example, I could do the same here, G, Z, and Z. And again, you can see how the blue line has changed. And if I undo that and do it again, you can see when I press G and then press Z, it has it in the global Z. 
that's the blue line. If I press it again, it changes it to the local Z. And I can change that and move that around. So, but it can get a bit more complex than this and can give us some more options for what we want to do, especially when adding things to these sorts of objects. So let's start talking through that. So let's tab out of this and let's look at a new problem. Say I want to, I don't know, bring in a rivet to add to this. I could just press Control and A, bring in a quad sphere. You might not have an option for quad sphere, but you could just bring in a normal UV sphere and microsphere. And this brings it in on the origin. I can move this around until I get it to where I want. So for example, somewhere on this piston. Probably gonna need to shrink that down. So we'll scale that to something like that and then bring that there. So we can quite easily get this to where we want it to be. Let's say I want it there. But now this is going to get annoying to move. Let's say I want to do another one. So shift and D and I want it further up. I'm sort of guessing this and it's not going to look straight. The other problem with this, and this isn't the biggest problem, but it is something that we want to be aware of, is that if I tab it into vertex mode, you can see this is going to make a really ugly Boolean when I start bringing things together as everything's cutting across everything else. It doesn't look very nice. So realistically, I want this to share the orientation or the local orientation of this object. It's going to solve that as a problem and it's going to make everything Boolean together and it means I can manipulate it more easily. Now, there's a few ways of doing this. The horrible way, which would be to look here, remember this rotation, write it down and copy it across. That's a bad plan. So instead, what we can do is actually just copy the attributes of this and put it onto this object. Now, we do this by having an add-on enabled, which is native in Blender. So we're going to go to Edit, Preferences, and we're going to come to Add-ons. I'm going to type in Copy. And we want this Copy Attributes menu. And all this is going to do is that when I press, say, for example, this, press Control and C, it has a lot more options. And you'll notice they're all dulled out at the moment. OK, because to use all these, it does tell us we need to select at least two objects. So what I want to do is I want to have this object is the one that I want to change. And then I shift click and make sure the active object is the one where I want to copy the attributes from. And if I now press Control and C, I can copy all of these other bits. And importantly, we want to copy the rotation. So if I do that now and come onto this, firstly, we can see that the local orientation has completely changed. Now, if I press G and Z and Z, I can move this up and down my object really easily, and it's going to be perfect every time. It also means that if I array this object, add modifiers, array, and I want to go along the Z axis, let's do something like that, it again will be perfect. We don't have to fiddle around with anything. So really, really useful just for those arrays. And also, if I go into vertex mode, we've got a lot, or we will be creating a much neater Boolean here. So really, really useful to do that, makes things a lot easier to fiddle around with. So Control and C with that copy attributes menu. And this also means that, say, for example, I wanted to add something to this, maybe an array of rivets. I can do that because it will create our radial arrays aligned with this local axis. I'm just going to use hard ops for this but obviously you can do this in the longer standard way. And if you don't know how to create a radial array, I have got a tutorial on the subject. I will put a link in the description. So radial array, and you'll notice that is being created in the local orientation. Let's undo that. So that's copying an attribute to make this easier. Now, if we're gonna be doing a lot of work on this object, bringing in a lot more details, that is going to get tedious. I mean, it's quite quick to do, Control and C, but there are things we can do to make this more useful or faster still when bringing in new objects. And that is that we can start working off the cursor or using the cursor to bring in objects already at this orientation. So with this object selected, let's just press Shift and S, and I'm going to move the origin to this selected object. And this is made very obvious when we've got this local gizmo on that the cursor is moved or rotates to the orientation of this object which is great. So now I can just bring in an object and it was going to be orientated to the cursor in theory, except if I bring in this cube and enlarge it, we'll see that it's not. We can fix this though. It's an option in preferences. If I go to edit preferences and then go to editing, it's got an option here for new objects. And at the moment they are aligned to the world. And if I click that, I can just change it. So they're aligned to the 3T cursor. And now when I bring in a cube and I'm doing this for a reason, I've just noticed I must have moved something that I've got a Boolean here that cuts out where the piston's going to be for that object, but not for this one. Whereas now I can press shift and A, mesh, bring in a cube, 
press S to enlarge it, and we've got it in the orientation of this object. So I can G, Z, and Z. I can move that to something like there, and easily Boolean this out of that other object. And I can see that this is nice and centered, so I can scale it, seeing that I need to scale it on the red axis, which is the X, so I can press S, X, and X again, and now I can scale this as I choose. Now thinking about it, one other thing that I should probably mention is if I go to Q and ever scroll and bring this back. Now this double tapping of everything does get a little bit tedious. So say I want to do something and I want to manipulate this object more quickly and I don't want to have to keep double tapping. We can change this so we're always going to work in the local orientation. And that menu is up here in the center where at the moment we've got this transform orientation is set as global. We can set this to local. So now if I go to this object and for example, I select face and I select that face, I can just press G and this time it is Z and I don't have to double tap and I can move that out as I need to. So if you're going to be doing a lot of work on that local orientation, that is a nice quick way of speeding that up. To be honest, I never really use that. I just double tap. It doesn't take a lot of time, but for some people they might find that useful. So I did want to mention it. I'm just going to hide that. Now, the final thing we're going to look at is a worst case scenario. I've got this object here. I want to edit it, but I've pressed Control and A and I've applied the rotation. If I press N, you can see that that's now there and my local gimbal is just in the same direction as the rest of the world. And press N to hide that because we don't need it. Now this is potentially a bit of a disaster because we've now lost access to all of this information. Obviously I could undo this, but let's say that we did this a while ago and we've done other operations since then and we've got no way of undoing this. Yes, I could go back and copy this, but I don't want to have to try and line this up perfectly again. So how are we gonna make it so we can manipulate things again in the direction we want? Now this is where this top menu becomes really useful. Now if I go into face mode, and set it so that we can see the normal direction. And we can do that here. If I come to my viewport overlays and we can select different orientations that we want to see. And I want to see my normals and I can make that a bit bigger if I want to, so they're more exaggerated. And we can see that regardless of what's happened to the orientation of our object, our normals have kept the orientation of their faces. That's just the way Blender works, it has to. Now what we can do is we can have a look now for a normal that is going to match, and if I just go into isolated mode, that's going to match the directions that we want to manipulate in. For example, I can quite clearly see that this face here has a normal orientation that is essentially the orientation of the object. So does this one here, so does this one. So generally you will be able to find one. And now if I click on this and go to normal. What that will do, and just to make this visible, I should change this local gizmo to the normal. We can see that this has got the orientation of our object. Okay, it is slightly different. Originally Z was going in this direction and now it's pointing almost up, but that's not really a problem for this. We just need to keep an eye on it. So great, I can now start manipulating things in the correct direction like G and Z and I'll manipulate it that way because I've set this to manipulate in the direction of the normal. But if I select something else, for example, if I select one, two, three, you'll see that those normals, because they start averaging out, especially if I click two, aren't gonna stay in this orientation. And depending on what I want to manipulate, this isn't always gonna work. And it's definitely not gonna work with another object. So that's a problem. And if I go back in, I'm just gonna do this again so we can see what would happen and press Shift and S and move this to the selected. Now, when I bring in an object, so control and A and again a cube, it's not in the orientation we want to manipulate. I'm just going to make that a little bit smaller so we can see both at the same time. And if I tap into edit mode and faces, this isn't helping us. I can't do anything with this normal orientation, except for I can. If you come here to the transform orientations, at the side, there is a plus button and it creates a transform orientation that is customized and it's got a name. So I can click here and just add that I'm going to call it piston face. And now that's been saved as a custom orientation and we're going to keep working on it. So for example, if I just delete this and just bring in, let's say a quad sphere again, while the local orientation for this is not going to be, or the normal orientation is going to be this, when I press G and let's say X and G and Y, it's going to work off that orientation that we've copied from this face. 
mean that we still have a way of manipulating everything in a way that's going to be more useful to us. Now, the other thing we could do, and we can do this in a multitude of different ways, is that if I go into face mode, and again, I've got this face selected, I can press Shift and S, and I can move our cursor to the face. And I do have the option here to transform things by the cursor, so I could just have the cursor there, and then again, move this by the cursor, so G and X would be that direction. And what is possibly more useful about this is that I can come in and change the object gizmo to be the direction of the cursor. So again, I can see everything and I know what direction Z is, for example. As always, if you like the video and want to help me out by feeding the algorithms of YouTube by pressing the like button, it'd be really appreciated. And I look forward to seeing you next time for our next Blender tutorial.